hello everyone welcome again today in this video i'm going to share a topic that is comet assay and uh, comet assay comes under the genotoxicity test in genotoxicity we are studied for uh, test for assay that is aims assay second one is comet assay micronuclei test and the fourth one is a sister cometed exchange assay so these uh, four tests are used uh, to determine or study to determine whether um, whether any agent causing any mutagenicity or not so if a particular agent causes any uh, mutagenicity then it comes under the genotoxicity test positive and if the, that antigen is not causing any type of mutagenicity then that antigen is determined as a negative genotoxicity test so comet assay basically is used to determine whether there is a um, there is a split in the dna or uh, there is a any break in the double stranded dna or whether in a single stranded dna or is there any alkali denaturation uh, alkali lysis in the dna break so this is determined with the help of the comet assay comet assay represent a type of image which uh, looks like a comet comet is a like a comet is like a star so uh, when the image appears like a comet so we can say that uh, um, our dna is damaged there is a double strand break or either uh, or single strand break in the dna so what happens in the comet assay i'll totally uh, give you explanation give you an explanation about the procedure that how comet assay perform but before knowing about the procedure this is a introduction or theoretical part of the comet assay so basically comet assay is also known as a single cell gel electrophoresis means in this assay we are uh, we are focusing on a single cell that's why it is known as a single cell gel electrophoresis because electrophoresis is a main method which is used to determine the comet assay and in this assay we measure the double stranded dna break at the level of individual eukaryotic cell this is a very simple and sensitive method and with the help of this method uh, we can we can evaluate the dna damage or repair and its biomonitoring and genotoxicity testing this method or uh, this procedure is developed by osterling and jonas son and uh, this method helps in the detection of single strand break double strand break or even alkali labile sites present in the dna so uh, this method is of two type either alkaline uh, comet assay or neutralized comet assay so in the alkaline comet assay this is a very sensitive method and because it detects very low level of dna damage and uh, also alkaline comet assay require very a uh, small sample of cells and low cost and flexibility of this test is very high and the performance facility and it takes very less time for the performance so the term comet here it refers to the pattern of dna migration that is dna migration through the electrophoresis gel which often resembles a comet uh, basically what we do normally in the electrophoresis assay we perform a sample um, we perform the migration of dna sample towards the anode or cathode because as the dna is a negatively charged biomolecule so it move towards the positive charge that is towards the cathode so here we do the same but for the single cell so firstly we have to prepare a cell single cell we have to isolate the single cell from any sample so in this method what is the principle for this method that it is mainly used to measure the dna double strand breaks of the eukaryotic cell and in this we um, made a slide which is uh, um, filled with agarose gel and there is a single cell suspension single cell in the agarose gel over the microscopic slide and then we uh, lyse this slide with the help of any detergent or any salt then uh, the nucleoid which is present inside the cell it is super coiled and form the loop of dna and then we electrophores that uh, sample that microscopic slide we electrophores that microscopic slide which contain single cell and over the single cell in embedded in the agarose gel and then after the electrophoresis at a high ph that is in alkaline nature the structure appears of that dna the single cell dna a uh, nucleus dna 
that is that is resemble with the comet then after the resembling of uh, then after the after getting the structure of comet of that uh, nucleus we observed that uh, structure with the help of fluorescence mac microscopy and the intensity of the comet tail is observed so the there is a two part of that migrated dna one is head and one is a tail the head and tail both are comparable and if the tail um, is high in length then we find that there is a lot of double strand break or either um, single strand break or any alkali lysed labile sites are present in the dna so we can determine that whether the dna is damaged or not simply here you can see this is very simple diagrammatic representation of the comet image which we obtained in the last this is our result after electrophoresis uh, electrophoresis the sample this is a single cell and uh, after removing all the cytoplasmic content and all other things this is a nucleus structure after electrophoresis this uh, dna which is present inside the nucleus actually this is a dna structure super coiled dna when after electrophoresis normally what we obtain normally in simple um, when we do simple experiment we obtain that major part of dna and uh, and like less part of dna uh, which is small in size uh, that is migrated towards the and uh, towards the cathode uh, with very high speed and here in in this image you can see that this red color represent the comet head and this green color represent the comet tail and this comet tail represent the damaged dna and this comet head represent the intact dna which is present in the full form in complete form there is no breakage in the intact dna but there is damaged dna as the tail composition is high or you can see the length of the tail is high so we can determine that there is a large amount of damaged dna present in the sample so this is the method of uh, the schematic representation of the principle of the comet assay first of all we prepare a slide in which cells mixed with low melting point agarose at 37 degree celsius and after that we we take a microscopic slide and uh, uh, filled it with the agarose gel which is low melting point so uh, like if there is a microscopic slide you fill it with agarose gel which is low uh, melting which have low melting point and keep it you keep it which which have low melting point at 37 degree celsius at room temperature now cells which are isolated the sample which is um, which you want to determine whether it whether whether it containing any damaged dna or not you uh, fill it with this microscopic slide uh, this uh, in this embed in this agarose gel so suspension of cell and then immob immobilization of cells on slide and then fix it now you have a slide slide with agarose gel and your sample is embedded in this agarose gel which is low melting point after this this microscopic slide slide is lysis uh, lysis is done with this microscopic slide and this is done with the lysis solution so that any membrane or histones from the dna should be removed with the help of this cell lysis solution any uh, membrane or histones from the dna removed easily after that we are go we are going for uh, electrophoresis for 5 millivolt per centimeter for 1 minute and after that there is unwinding and in this sample treated with alkali after electrophoresis the microscopic slide is treated with alkali so the dna unwinds and denatures and it becomes now single stranded after that staining and comet scoring samples stained with intercalating dye and visualized by fluorescence microscopy following alkaline electrophoresis reveals dna break that we want to know that either there is any uh, dna break present or not in the nucleus so this is our main motive to know that whether the dna break is present or not after that the image of comet we get and the head is composed of intact dna while the tail consists of single strand break or double strand break so this is the image which we get which we got in uh, in the result it has a comet it has a head and it has a tail head has intact dna and tail has damaged dna so this is the main uh, preparation method 
you can go for this procedure there are different steps like first is encapsulation second is lysis third is electrophoresis and the fourth and this this is the last one after that there is there are some applications and advantages and there is some limitations you can read it with the uh, by uh, pausing the video i am just going to tell you something that uh, in the encapsulation method we are go we are uh, uh, go for preparation of the slide sample of cells for from in vitro or in vivo it is dispersed into individual cell and suspended in molten agar molten agar at 37 degree and then mono suspension is obtained which is uh, uh, cast on a microscopic slide and this uh, is covered with a cover slip and spread the molten agar and now the agaros is gelled at 4 degree celsius and color cover slip is removed so you have in you encapsulated the cells your sample onto the microscopic slide inside the gel now lysis the slide are then immersed in a solution that causes the cells to lyse and then lysis solution consists of a highly concentrated aqueous salt and a detergent and after that the ph of the lysis solution can be adjusted depending upon the type of damage whether which type of damage you want to know either single stranded or double stranded and then after the lysis you uh, the slides are washed distilled with the distilled water to remove all salts and then electro uh, and then dip in a electrophoresis solution ph of solution is adjusted and slides are left over for 20 minutes and after that you are uh, go for um, applying the electric field for 20 minutes and after this you remove the slide and neutralized it at ph 7 and um, observe the image with the help of computer with the help of your mic uh, with the help of a dna fluorescent stain and analyzed it with the help of microscope and attached which is attached with the computer so you can obtain a image which uh, appears which looks like this so this is uh, complete cell and you can see this is a tail of comet and this is your head of comet so this is the main method which is a single cell electrophoresis or comet assay this is a this this shows the damaged dna double strand break single strand break and this shows intact dna so this was the whole method of comet assay thank you